Welcome to the second quarter webinar with Apollo Crypto. Um, I'm Henrik Anderson. I'm the CIO of Apollo Crypto. Um, and I might be joined later by our investment partner, Mark Woodward, as well, who might join this seminar in just a little bit. Uh, for, you, for, for those of you who are new to uh, Apollo, uh, we are a crypto asset manager uh, based here in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we are an investment manager for an Australian crypto fund, and we are also an investment advisor for two offshore funds. Uh, we manage uh, both long strategies in crypto as well as a market neutral strategy. We are fundamental based investors and historically we have had a big focus on uh, DeFi um, and um, uh, our funds are open to accredited uh, investor um, or here in Australia, uh, wholesale investors. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to kick off uh, giving an overview of some of the big macro trends um, and also some uh, crypto-specific trends we are seeing uh, in crypto. Um, but first, I just want to say that everyone is welcome to post their questions. So, if you have any questions around crypto or what we do at or what we do at Apollo Crypto, you're welcome to post those questions. Um, uh, in the chat here, and I'll try my best to answer them um, after a little overview that I will give of the crypto markets as we see them uh, in the first half of this year. So I think there are a few uh, big trends we are seeing uh, in the crypto markets um, and maybe more generally uh, in, the, in, the, in the macro environment that we're in right now. Um, so uh, towards the end of 2021, uh, we saw a big change when it came to central banks. Uh, they started tightening, uh, which was a big change from the macro environment we had been in for quite a while. Uh, interest rates were close to 0%, but uh, in the beginning of 2021, uh, we saw inflation coming up. Um, and that triggered the central banks to change their stance on interest rates. Um, and uh, towards the end of a 21, uh, 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 rate hike cycle uh, started. Uh, and this was something that happened on a global scale. Um, and I think most of you are aware of, of this, but I think it's sometimes, it's sometimes good to... Um, to, um, to look back and look at the big picture. So we have had the central bank's uh, interest rate um, hikes uh, happening and uh, the Federal Reserve in the US um, hike rates 10 times in a row. Um, and that, that is finally coming to an end now. The effect it had is that it put a lot of pressure on the bond market in 2022, uh, put a lot of pressure on equity markets in 22 as well, uh, as well as uh, crypto markets. Um, um, and um, that cycle is now coming to, to an end. We saw an inflation number out of the US here overnight at 3%. That's the lowest since March 2021. Um, at that time, we had the highest inflation in, in, in four decades uh, in, in the US. So the Federal Reserve is pausing the rate hikes. We might see one more hike coming. Um, uh, and, that, and that goes for Australia as well. And now we're joined by uh, our investment partner, um, Mark, uh, as well. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Henrik. Apologies for the uh, technical difficulties. No worries at all. Uh, I just started with uh, a macro overview and I was talking about central banks and the, uh, the change in stance and the turning point perhaps that are coming um, with central banks globally. And I think that's interesting for all markets, including crypto. Um, so we saw that inflation number overnight. I don't know if you saw that mark at 3% in the US, which was the lowest since March 21. Uh, so we've seen 
10 rate hikes uh, in a row, but uh, we are coming to an end when it comes to the hiking cycle. Um, so that's a big shift kind of in the macro environment. Um, yeah, curious for your thoughts on that as well, Mark. Yeah, I think the central bank can be um, you know, confident in the fact that uh, their interest rate hikes have uh, slowed inflation. I think um, a lot of people, especially um, you know, in the crypto markets, have been hoping for um, this sort of news. And I think what we'll see over the next month or two is the Fed, you know, certainly becoming a bit more dovish in their increases. And what do what do you think it will mean for crypto markets going forward if we are seeing the end of the uh, hiking cycle here? Yeah, I think historically crypto has been driven by liquidity in the markets. Uh, so to the extent that that starts to come back in the market, or at least uh, investors uh, start to have confidence. Um, in a more favorable liquidity uh, situation for our markets, I, I think that will be will be good for us, especially with the other macro events going on. Uh, you know, you know, the traditional financial institutions becoming more and more positive and involved in in the crypto markets. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's another point I want to come to. Kind of the traditional firms getting more involved in the crypto markets, which uh, uh, perhaps came as a bit of a surprise because. Uh, I think as we talked about a few times this year, the SEC has taken a quite aggressive stance when it comes to crypto, and we see them um, suing Coinbase and Binance, two of the largest exchanges out there, um, their U.S. entities specifically. Um, and there is currently a lot of uncertainty what is considered a security, um, and um, that's that's one key thing in 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 these lawsuits. Um, if if the exchanges should be regulated as security exchanges, if the assets themselves are securities uh, or not. Um, so we saw that happening in the last few months. Um, uh, those those announcements, um, and those are ongoing uh, lawsuits, and they will most likely take a long time to sort out. Right, so uh, there is a legal process that might take years to sort out. Um, I think there are at least hopes out there that we will see kind of regulation in place, perhaps before, you know, these lawsuits come to a conclusion. And I think that would probably be, um, you know, something that uh, the industry uh, can look forward to because we need more clarity. Um, so if we get regulation in place that provides that clarity, um, then um, I, I think at least in the U.S., um, uh, no firms can operate uh, kind of in, in in a more clear environment when it comes to many of these assets. Um, and on the back of that, uh, we have seen a number of traditional firms. And makes make moves in the, in the crypto market, as you mentioned, Mark. So uh, a big name is BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock filed for a Bitcoin spot ETF, um, and it's a bit curious that it comes after these lawsuits against Coinbase and Binance. Um, but I think, you know, specifically Bitcoin is an asset that um, that you know was not mentioned by the SEC, and I think there is. Uh, broad consensus that Bitcoin is not a security, it's considered a commodity. Um, and on that basis, some of the biggest firms in the world are moving ahead uh, with their offerings. And um, you know, BlackRock is the biggest asset manager in the world with over $9 trillion in under, under management. Uh, what, what do you think, Mark? Uh, if if we get uh, an approval for for a spot Bitcoin ETF from a player like BlackRock, is that meaningful for for the crypto market at large? Clearly, I think it will. Uh, it will provide investors a regulated and sort of comfortable means to invest in crypto and to be able to get exposure to it. Um, it's not just going to be BlackRock. I think you'll see ETFs from a number of different financial institutions. Uh, it really is sort of a matter of time, even though it's been um, very discouraging over the past uh, year or even longer. 
to not have a, a ETF, a spot ETF approved in the US. We have seen it in other jurisdictions. So clearly it is possible. Uh, clearly investors um, um, you know, have received a, a benefit from having these ETFs approved in, in other jurisdictions. So I think it'll be a matter of time before they are approved. Uh, investors should also keep in mind that uh, there will be uh, a US election in 2024. Uh, you've already seen crypto become a political issue. Certain candidates are, are starting to uh, speak about it and, and have uh, opinions and have a position on it, which I think is a positive thing. Uh, you may also see a change in the um, you know, the leadership of the SEC at some point. There's been rumors around that about what Gary Gensler's you know, career path is or what his you know, desires are. Um, so I think we could see, um, you know, a more favorable environment going forward. And certainly I think the investor sentiment uh, shift over the past quarter has uh, has shown that. I'd also just like to um, uh, remind the attendees that if they would like to answer or ask a question to either myself or Henrik uh, or us both uh, to please submit those and we will we will start to get to those towards the uh, uh, the half hour. Yeah, and uh, may, may, maybe also important to remember that the U.S. is not the only, uh, you know, the, the the only you know country here that are regulating crypto. Uh, we have seen the European Union uh, you know, enact uh, Mika, uh, which will come to effect in the next couple of years. Uh, we are seeing um, Hong Kong, for example, um, regulate exchanges. Um, we see, um, you know, a lot of activity in places like Singapore and Dubai as well. So, uh, US is not the only market uh, out there, even if it's uh, certainly very important. Um, but we have seen a number of traditional firms, which I think is interesting, and it's definitely been one of the big narratives this year. BlackRock being one of them, others being Deutsche, who who is looking at the custody side. There is a institutional crypto exchange called EDX that is. That, that I believe went live recently that are backed by Charles Schwab, uh, uh, Citadel, um, and, um, and I believe Fidelity. Um, we have seen other ETF providers as well file for spot Bitcoin uh, ETFs like Wisdom3. So um, I think that's interesting to see, especially in, in, in light of the SEC action. Um, Henrik, do you think we will see uh, you, we will start to see uh, ETFs for Ethereum as well? I, I think that will be the next one. That, that's the kind of the logical uh, um, follow, follow up to a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, that's what happened on the in the futures market, right? We saw a CME uh, launch their a Bitcoin uh, futures and, and and later the Ethereum one, and I expect the same kind of pattern to happen in the, on on the ETF side. Um, yeah, I think that makes ma makes a lot of sense. Ethereum, as we know, is the second largest uh, uh, crypto asset out there, around half the size of of of, of bitcoins. Um, so I think that and, would make a lot of sense. And so while we're on the topic of the the US SEC and their you know and their crackdown on on the crypto market, um, as it's been asked by a uh, an attendee. The medium to longer term opportunity in crypto outside of Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, I mean, clearly as, as a firm, we have been um, significant investors over the last five years in, in DeFi or decentralized finance in alternative layer ones, um, you know, cross-chain capability across crypto. So, you know, could you just reinforce our beliefs uh, for investors on the, the much larger investing universe in crypto outside of the two majors and outside of the, the ETFs. Yeah, sure. So as, as, as you mentioned, like D DeFi and NFTs uh, markets are, uh, you know, have evolved the last couple of years and, and we have a strong belief that they're here to stay. So that's a uh, you know, giant opportunity, we believe. We believe DeFi is a new financial infrastructure uh, public utility for the world, um, uh, and the NFT markets, you know, still despite the bear market in the NFT markets, we are seeing you know big brand brands, uh, you know, 
uh, do new launches in the NFT markets. I think I just saw this morning 7-Eleven doing something uh, in the NFT space. We have brands like Starbucks, you know, doing things in the NFT space. So we believe, you know, DeFi and NFT markets are here to stay. Um, and that is enabled by, you know, platforms like Ethereum and other, um, uh, other expressive um, uh, blockchains. Um, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, NFT markets, they, they, will, they will be here to stay. And, um, you know, right now we have been, you know, gone through a brutal market in the last 18 months, you know, a global bear market in equities, in bond markets, um, as well as in, in crypto markets, we have seen some of the largest exchanges in the space like FD, FTX fail um, and a lot of other events. Um, but I think we have seen, uh, you know, mo most of that filtered through. We are, you know, coming to a change in micro environment, which what we talked about in the turning point kind of uh, ha happening, um, you know, inflation numbers coming down dramatically close to the 2% target that central banks has. Um, uh, we are seeing some of the largest firms in the world looking at the crypto markets like BlackRock. I think these are positive signs. Um, um, you know, right now, sentiment is, is very low in the crypto markets, but uh, historically, what we have seen is that sometimes that's the best time to place your bets um, uh, in 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 the markets yeah i think that's right and i think that's a message that we have been reinforcing to investors is that this is a, a highly uh, cyclical uh, investment category uh, historically it has followed a, a predictable four-year pattern um, and that those investors that have allocated into crypto markets during bear markets uh, have been the ones that have done the best. That might sound obvious, but when the sentiment is so negative and everyone's saying crypto is dead and the SEC or you know various governments are going to regulate it out of existence, those tend to be the uh, the best opportunities to start allocating uh, in, into crypto. Yeah, and the, uh, worth mentioning as well, uh, kind of the backdrop to the four four year cycle is the Bitcoin halving, which is happening every four years, and the next one coming up next year in April, May. Um, uh, so that's sort of, uh, sort of aligns with that, that, that cycle. That's right. And I think that, uh, you know, whether or not we see a huge impact from the, the having, I think the, the meme of it or the idea of it, uh, tends to work quite well in the market. Um, you know, crypto, um, uh, is powered a lot, as I, I mentioned earlier by, you know, liquidity, but also by a narrative and a meme uh, or a certain idea. And investors are already starting to talk about the the having in Bitcoin in early next year. Yeah, makes sense. I thought we would um, at least uh, at least mention some of the more crypto specific narratives as well uh, on the in this call. So one one uh, one area we have talked talked quite a bit about the last year or so is kind of or eth centric approach to uh to investing and or belief that the ethereum ecosystem is is extremely strong um so i think that's worth reiterating and i think that's playing out quite nicely uh we have seen the rise of ethereum layer twos which enables enables scaling of the ethereum network so in our portfolio you know we have assets like optimism op arbitrum polygon um, so I think, um, you know, that, that growth, I think we, we, we continue to see, we also made a number of primary investments, you know, related to that, uh, theme, if you like, most re recently Eigenlayer, which is the restaking network for, for Ethereum, um, and also Swell, Swell is a liquid, uh, staking derivatives, derivative on Ethereum, which, you know, have grown a lot in the recent recent weeks um, since it launched, and it's now one of the top ten uh, liquid staking derivatives out there, and it continues to see uh, really nice nice growth. So, I think that thesis is is playing out very nicely. Um, on the primary side, we have also seen the launch of uh, um, of a 
new AMM called Maverick, which we were early seed investors into. And so we were very happy with that launch. They're quite innovative um, in their design, uh, doing, um, doing something called uh, concentrated liquidity. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, great to see that that launch, and they uh, did a public launch as well together with Binance. So that was great to see, being long time long time supporters. Um, Henry, could you could you just explain what a AMM is for our investors, and and sort of why that's important, and what are some of the tokens that are being traded on on Maverick, and and why that's important to those people who who want to trade them. Yeah, sure. I, I I can maybe give a very brief overview. So MMM stands for Automated Market Maker, uh, and that's how we uh, trade assets on the blockchain. Uniswap was one of the first AMMs to launch um, three, four years ago now. They're by far the biggest one in that space. Um, and... AMMs are an alternative to using centralized exchanges like Coinbase or Binance. Um, and we have seen a lot of innovation in that space. Uh, Uniswap, which I mentioned, have innovated. They are now operating on their V3 and they recently announced their version four of Uniswap. Um, Maverick is um, uh, doing something that is very capital efficient. So capital efficiency is important for the investors that are providing the liquidity to these AMMs. So that's where Maverick has been innovating. So they're very capital efficient, meaning that compared to the liquidity, their volume is very high. And they specializes in, in especially when it comes to like-for-like -like assets. So those are things like stable coins or something like uh, uh, liquid staking derivatives, like we mentioned Swell. So Swell ETH uh, has one of the biggest markets on Maverick. Um, so that's what Maverick is. They're you know, multi-chain as well. So currently they're on Ethereum mainnet as well as ZK Sync, which is one of these L2 rollups. Um, so that's, I think, Really good that we are see, still seeing innovation in the DeFi space, uh, and Maverick is one of those. Um, and we are still seeing more innovation coming. We are seeing innovation in the on-chain derivatives space as well, where we have been very active. So, for example, we are looking now at the primary investment in the options um, field, and that's a project that are really innovating in that space. So. When we do our primary investments, that's something we look for, um, a protocol that really innovates. Um, there are a lot of uh, projects that are launching copycats, um, something that are already working, and they're sort of launching something very similar, not very innovative. That's less interesting for us. We are really looking for that kind of fundamental innovation um, when we look at new projects we invest in. So on-chain derivatives is another space where we have seen a lot of growth. We have seen, you know, even an old project like Synthetics innovate and, and gain a lot of uh, market share in the last, uh, you know, in, in the first half of this year. Um, and I, th I believe we will see more, more innovation in that space. We have seen, you know, the futures market, the perp market, again, a lot of traction in the on-chain derivatives space. Uh, and um, I mentioned options, and options might be the next you know, subsector within on-chain derivatives where we'll see, where we'll see a lot of growth ahead. So we're coming up to a, a half the hour. I don't know if um, if we have more questions. We urge everyone to ask their questions in the Q and A. Yeah, so we do have one here just on on Bitcoin. So we've talked a little bit about how the Ethereum ecosystem uh, has scaled and sort of will you know, continue to, to innovate. Um, it is currently the largest um, ecosystem for, for DeFi and other interesting apps and certainly NFTs. What about some of the you know, developments on Bitcoin? Is there anything interesting going on there? 
How will that develop over time? Um, is it something that you know the proponents of Bitcoin want to see, or do they want to, or do they want to keep it sort of a, a static, you know, sort of monolithic uh, asset? Yeah, I think the Bitcoin community is quite divided when it comes to that. There are certain you know parts of the Bitcoin community that are looking for innovation and you know building DeFi and NFTs on Bitcoin. Other parts, I believe, of the Bitcoin ecosystem want to keep it. Uh, more narrow focusing on digital gold. So I think there is a division there uh, in the community. Um, but again, we have seen uh, you know Bitcoin perform very well this year for for a few reasons. One of them being that we are seeing some innovation on Bitcoin. So we have seen you know the rise of NFTs on Bitcoin. Uh, we have seen protocols building on top of Bitcoin like stacks performing very well. They're trying to do DeFi on top of Bitcoin. We haven't really seen DeFi uh, or Lightning for that matter really take off, I would say. Um, and I think there are still some question marks uh, if that will happen or not. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that, but uh, uh, it's good to see uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's good to see innovation happening on the in the Bitcoin ecosystem as well. Sure. And do you think uh, ordinals and, and inscriptions are a good use case for innovation? Do you think they will continue, or do you think it was a bit of a, a flash in the pan? Where where do you see that that little sector headed? Yeah, I think it was exciting to see that happening on Bitcoin, and and I think that provides something not different to Ethereum. Um, I could see high value NFTs. Uh, being minted on Bitcoin because of um, kind of the properties they are on chain, uh, so they're actually on the on the blockchain. Um, Bitcoin is considered the most secure, immutable blockchain out there, so I think it could make sense for have high value NFTs, for example. Okay. Thank you. So we do have a question about our market neutral fund. So a lot of the topics that we've uh, spoken about have been more about our long funds. Uh, but as some of our investors will obviously know, um, we run a, a market neutral fund, uh, which is a strategy to try to generate yield um, from stable coins. So trying to uh, eke out inefficiencies in yield uh, without having uh, volatility in the market. So the question is about how do we see that fund? How do we see yields going forward and and what new strategies or or things are we looking at you know to be able to generate alpha yeah so our market neutral fund um it has had uh, uh all positive mon months this year um which we're happy about but the yield itself has come down in in DeFi. so in that fund we are very active in what's called yield farming that yield is coming uh, ha has come down um but we're also working on new strategies for that that fund um, um, that are automated. We have three devs uh, in the team that has been working hard on that. So we are hopeful to be able to scale that in the months ahead. Um, and you know, the purpose with that is to um, to be able to offer um, you know better risk reward if, if if you like, since the DeFi yield has been under pressure uh, you know um, recently. That's right, and and operating that fund is a a liquidity provider to um, newer DeFi platforms has sort of informed our um, investment strategies and our long funds as well because we, you know, we start to see those projects very early on in their development. It also helps us get into some deals because we can be a, a liquidity provider to them as well. Uh, so being on both this this long and the LP side uh, has certainly helped our our funds and our access to primary deals. Yeah, that's right. We're very active in the markets, um, always looking at things, always uh, kind of uh, actually using using this technology also ourselves. So that's important across all our strategies. So we do have a question about where we think Bitcoin will be in one month and three months. Uh, I'll answer that. So we generally don't, you know, provide forward-looking guidance um, on. On crypto prices, we continue to be bullish about the sector in general. Bitcoin is a core holding in our uh, Apollo crypto fund. Uh, it's one that we've held since inception. 
um, and certainly it, uh, you know, believe it will, will continue to be the number one crypto asset by market cap going forward. Yeah, that's right. And if there's, are there any other questions, um, please feel to feel free to uh, fire them through uh, and we could answer them for you. Mark, uh, in general, how do you think the rest of the year plays out? <laughs> Uh, more predictions. Um, look, I think it's going to continue to be volatile, right? And I think, um, again, you know, when I speak to investors and they ask questions about forward-looking guidance, I, I say, look, um, it's very difficult, you know, to, to be able to predict prices in any short-term time period. Um, we are bullish on this sector. We think that despite some of the headwinds that we've seen, especially in the regulatory space, uh, which is something we wrote about earlier in the year, we thought we were going to have a very good year, or at least a much better year than we did last year, even though it wouldn't be too hard to do. Um, you know, but the major assets in crypto are already up 70 or 80% from, from the lows. Um, DeFi and other sectors, you know, I think continue to be under pressure. Uh, but again, it's been these periods of um, low sentiment and apathy, um, where we feel that the market has started to bottom out uh, most of the forced sellers and and the leverage has been washed out of the system. Historically, have been good times to be able to start to allocate to crypto. Um, again, we always advise uh, investors to do their own research uh, and to invest according to their risk profile. So that's my very guarded answer. Uh, any more questions coming in here? Um... Uh, let's see. Um, so uh, there is a question about AI. There's been a lot of um, AI hype uh, with regard to trading bots. Is this a space that Apollo is um, investing in or is starting to consider? Um, yeah, it has um, definitely been, been been a lot of hype around AI. Um, I, I think it's quite difficult to see kind of the overlap between AI and, and blockchain. It's not necessarily a big overlap. I've seen some uh, investors out there arguing that, uh, you know, maybe you can use crypto to incentivize the human feedback in AI, in kind of the training phase of AI, those kind of things. But now it's not, you know, a super strong overlap, I believe, between AI and, and crypto. Having said that, like AI will will you know affect all industries, um, and, and and most likely everything we do, right? So it's going to to um, to in some some way affect crypto as well. Uh, but um, you know, there's I don't think there is a kind of a natural overlap if you like, or if you like. So there's a question about whether we intend to launch additional funds over the next 12 month period. Um, I'll just answer that. Uh, no, we're going to focus on our three funds uh, now uh, that, that we have currently. So as we've mentioned, one is our flagship Apollo crypto fund, which is a multi strategy fund that is designed to give investors broad exposure to crypto assets and strategies. So it's got a mixture of, um, uh, you know, layer one tokens like Ethereum and Bitcoin, DeFi, other uh, a, interesting areas of crypto, um, certainly primary deals, you know, venture capital style investments, as well as, as market neutral strategies. Uh, and then an offshoot of that fund called the Frontier Fund or the Apollo Crypto Frontier Fund, which provides a more focused um, exposure to the alternatives uh, in crypto. And then our market neutral fund, the Apollo Crypto Market Neutral Fund. So we are gonna focus on those three funds um, over the next 12 months. Yeah, we are sticking to crypto fundamentals and market neutral, and we are not pivoting to AI. So we did have a question about um, about transactions in crypto. It's often uh, a discussion about when is someone going to be able to buy coffee or groceries, you know, using crypto. Um, we think that will um, be important. I don't know that we're investing or uh, evaluating specific projects. We think that'll probably be an offshoot of existing applications, things like PayPal or Apple Wallet or your credit card, for example. We're seeing a number of 
implement implementations there where you have a, a physical debit card that's attached to a crypto wallet so that when you go and transact with a, a real world uh, retailer, uh, it'll automatically sell some of the crypto or you will have preloaded uh, that crypto into fiat or uh, or dollars. Yeah, so that's something like stable coins is an important innovation in that space and will be important when it comes to payments. So that's something like Visa and MasterCard, like you mentioned, Mark, uh, they're working on that. Yeah. And so we do have another question just on, on DeFi, just going back to your comments about the specific sectors, uh, you know, within DeFi that we are investing in and are optimistic about in the future. Um, do you think that the uh, the trading or the use of some of these DeFi applications and protocols will shrink given the, the US SEC crackdown? Uh, or do you think capital will, um, you know, I guess you have sort of two countervailing forces here, right? You've got um, uh, the SEC going after major exchanges like Coinbase and Binance uh, and potentially going after certain smaller DeFi protocols. How do you think that's going to balance out in the future? Where do you think the balance of, of DeFi will exist? Will it happen on the centralized exchanges or happen more in decentralized platforms and protocols? Yeah, I think uh, one thing that we have seen happening is that uh, I think some people realize that, uh, you know, DeFi has the benefit that you don't have to trust a third party. Um, so I think after the collapse of FTX, I think we have seen some more activity in, in DeFi, people trading in DeFi instead, don't, you know, keep the custody of your assets uh, and uh, that's the kind of one of the great benefits of the technology. Um, and we are seeing you know, exchanges moving into the DeFi space as well. Uh, Binance launched uh, Binance Chain a few years ago. Coinbase is now supporting a new Ethereum L2 called Base that is, uh, will be launched in the next month. Um, so we're seeing actually the centralized, some of the centralized players supporting this new decentralized innovation. So I think we will see more activity in the DeFi space. Okay. Um, are there any more questions from our audience? If not, I think that about wraps it up. Henrik, do you have any closing thoughts as, as to the next quarter? Um, well, I think... Uh, you uh, you summarized the outlook, I think, quite well for the next uh, for the rest of the year, Mark. But um, you know the crypto markets um, um, you know tend to always surprise us. Um, I think there's a good chance that we will see a major firm like BlackRock getting a Bitcoin ETF approved uh, sometime this year. Um, so those are the kind of things we're looking for. I mentioned. Coinbase launching, helping launch a new layer two. That's another major potential event in the crypto markets. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite constructive myself uh, around the crypto markets. Obviously, sentiment is not the best right now, um, but sometimes that is, that's also a contrarian um, indicator. Um, so that's um, that's my view. And... Um, and uh, we'll we'll continue to uh, to do our best to navigate uh, whatever is ahead of us. Um, but um, yeah, I think we could be, you know, have kind of news flow wise. I think we might have seen uh, um, um, seen 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 the worst, and uh, and you know we have seen. Uh, a lot of bad news over the last 12 months when it comes to FTX and other things that we mentioned. And I think a lot of that is past, past already. We are seeing central banks, you know, reaching a turning point. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite constructive and looking forward to uh, doing this again next quarter. Thanks, Henrik. Yeah, and I think that's that's been translated into our long funds as well, you know, towards the end of last year. The two long funds had a, a a significant cash position, you know, a very sort of neutral or bearish stance. Um, but as we felt the, that the markets were starting to bottom out, um, uh, the investments team started to deploy that capital uh, across the last couple of quarters. 
um, you know, both into existing positions, but also into new primary deals. So it's important that we, you know, continue our investment strategy uh, throughout these, uh, you know, somewhat, somewhat difficult quarters. Absolutely. So I think we'll leave it there. I just want to thank you, Henrik, uh, for your time. Um, and thanks to the audience for attending. Uh, so the crypto markets continue to be very fast moving and exciting. We do hold these Q&As and you know, webinars uh, every quarter. Uh, we also have a, a weekly newsletter and we publish research on the crypto markets uh, quite often. So if you haven't subscribed, please go to our website and subscribe there. I will remind investors and uh, the audience that, you know, the purpose of this webinar is to inform our investors and followers and to provide a general update on the markets. This was a, a general discussion and not to be taken as financial advice. So please do your own research. Uh, and again, feel free to subscribe to our, our newsletter. Uh, we certainly look forward to hearing from you uh, and we'll see you next time on this webinar. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thanks, Henrik.